What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So yesterday we left off. It's actually the same, same day as yesterday's video. We're back at the shop now. Let me explain why. Yesterday we left off leaky water pump on the car. We need to get a new water pump. I thought we were gonna have to order one in from Japan. I posted on Instagram, can anyone in the United States help me out getting an Evo 6 water pump? Because once again, we're running an Evo 6 block on this Evo 8. Evo 8 and 9 are different than 5, 6, and 7 as far as the water pump goes. Um, some of you guys on Instagram were very, very helpful and told me that a 2003 Mitsubishi Outlander water pump is actually the same, which is a little bit crazy because a 2003 Mitsubishi Outlander water pump is also the same pump that we'd run on the, the black Evo 8. If my memory is recalling correctly, it's the same water pump that we would run on a 2.4 liter block, if that makes sense. So I'm kind of familiar with that. I had no clue that they are the same as the older Evo blocks, which is very exciting. I called up O'Reilly's right when I got that news, said, yo, I need this water pump. And they said, it'll be here tomorrow at 9.30 or 8.30 a.m. at the store. So tonight I wanna to get the water pump off this car and bring it in with me to confirm it's the same, just in case it's not, we can get another one ordered up right away. Um, so yeah, that's the current game plan. And then I also do want to get this clutch line off as well because it's leaking and we have to go get a new one built for this car. So that's where we're at right now. Where's my monster? I just opened a monster. It's kind of late. Sorry, Bobby. I won't be home for a while. Um, I'm also getting sick, which is cool. Before you guys comment, you have the Rona. I don't have the Rona. There's such thing as just regular flu. Pretty sure it's because I drank a lot over the last weekend, like a lot more than I'm used to. And uh, I think I'm sick from that. So yeah, let's get this water pump off. Step one was a fail. Thankfully it's just water, but I uh, kind of missed the bucket. We got about a tenth of it in the bucket and I know it's still a little bit rusty looking. That's why we're gonna flush the system. <sighs> yep, beautiful start to the evening. Another mess and a water pump. Water pump is off. We can bring this boy in to good old O'Reilly's in the morning. Make sure she is the right one. It's funny because I remember doing the Black Evo 8 build. We had like the water pump off on that car I think three times because the first time we ran an Evo 8 water pump gasket which obviously leaked. Second time, correct gasket, still leaked. Third time, put RTV on the gasket and then it stopped leaking. So I might do that with this one. I don't know if it's the water pump gasket that was leaking or if it's coming out of the wheat pool, meaning the seals are bad on the pump. Either way, it's getting replaced with a new gasket with a touch of RTV, just so we make sure we don't do it three times this time around, just two. 
I'm gonna pop this clutch line off real quick as well, bring that with us tomorrow morning as we are running errands, grabbing parts for this car. And tomorrow, so later on in today's video, this thing is going to run, I know it. All right, here's our clutch line. So we need that end right there to be replaced with a fitting like that because that guy does not seal with our master for whatever reason. So here's the line, water pump is over here. Those two parts should hopefully get this car up and on the road tomorrow. Before we clean up the shop for the night and dispose of our water, I wanna spin the oil pump a lot until we start getting some oil out of the head, just to make sure we're not having any sort of oil pump issues. It would be nice to get it to run all the way through our turbo as well. So I may just pull off the turbo return. Yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna get the car up in the air, pull off that return, spin the oil pump until we get oil out the turbo return because I don't wanna to forget to do that tomorrow. All right, there we go. That's a steady stream of oil. Oh boy, all right, let's get that back on. Long story short, what we just did is ensured we had oil all the way from the pan, which is where the oil goes when you dump it in to the engine, it goes into the pan, that's where it sits. We now have all the way up through the top end, through the head, and down through the turbo. So now we don't have to worry about when we fire this engine for the first time, we're not gonna be worried about anything running dry without any sort of oil on it. Even though we did assemble it with assembly lube, it's always best to prime the engine. All right, well, I'll see you guys tomorrow with a new water pump and hopefully with a new clutch line as well. It is the next day. Just went to pick up the water pump and it appears to be the proper water pump for the car. And then we went down to House of Hose, dropped off our current rated clutch line and they're gonna remake it or make a whole new one. And that should take care of all of our issues. So let's head back to the shop right now and see if this water pump fits. Looks like it is the same. Big shout out to all you guys who DM me on Instagram. Without your guys' help, we would have been waiting probably a few weeks to get this car on the road. But now we have a beautiful new Import Direct OE replacement water pump for a 2003 Mitsubishi Outlander. So, like I said, if my memory is correct, same water pump that we'd run on the 2.4 liter Evo 8 build. Apparently Evo 5, 6, and 7s take the 03 Outlander pump as well. So if you guys are in a pinch like I am, head to your local auto parts store, pick one up for, what do we pay, $70? Hopefully this thing lasts. Let's get this guy installed. And hopefully by that time, they'll be done with our clutch line so we can get the clutch line installed. And then hopefully we can get the first startup out of the way. I am so excited for this thing now. We just got this thing completely back together. New water pump is in. Definitely a little bit harder to time it properly when the motor's in the car. So I'd highly recommend against that if you have the opportunity. That clutch line is done. I just got a text saying that it's all finished up. So I'm gonna go run and grab that, come back to the shop, get that thing installed. And then from there, check it over and hopefully start it up. This thing should be 100% ready for the very first start. Getting on the laptop right now to grab the base map from Mr. Chag Tuned himself. Gonna get that loaded up. We have to adjust the TPS and I think we might be ready. All right, we got the base map loaded up. Good to go there. I do want to go ahead and throw on that manual oil pressure gauge. Very, very, very last thing we, we need to do right now is have no oil pressure, which I'm confident that it'll be fine, but it's always nice to have a gauge. Let's go ahead, pop into Evo Scan, and we need to adjust our TPS. Very, very easy to do. So all you have to do is make sure your ignition is on. Click Start Data Logger. So currently it is reading 
10.98 for the throttle position as you guys can see so we are going to loosen the two set screws or the two lock screws on that tps and we're going to adjust it till that reading shows 13.3 and then we can tighten the two screws back down all right there we have it 13.3333 forever so we're good there i think that was the last thing we needed to do for that let's keep the coils unplugged crank sensor is unplugged what do we got to do that oil pressure gauge so i hope i have one I'm pretty sure i have a manual oil pressure gauge for the am gauge we did pick up this little remote line kit so that will thread into the back of the block where the factory oil pressure center goes and then the am will bolt on or thread on to the end of this thing here but for now we're just going to plug it right into the manual so we can kind of monitor it um we could probably even go drive this thing actually if we wanted because we could have this all the way inside the car i'm gonna get this slapped on real quick i'm not gonna fire this thing up till bobby gets here there's just so many uh variables i guess you'd say that i want her to be firing the car or running the car as i'm checking everything over Whoa, I haven't actually seen this all like put together. What's up, Bria? I'm here. You want to do the thing? I'm not starting it. You have to. I'm not starting it. All right, well, you want to, want to monitor my oil pressure, my AFRs, make sure we don't got any leaks, make sure we don't got a coolant leak. <sighs> I see you got your hair dyed today. Mm -hmm. Look a little sus over there on the edge. All right, Bobby got here we're about to do some things so bobby's gonna go in the car she's gonna crank it over i'm gonna make sure we got fuel pressure at the regulator make sure we got oil pressure on our remote gauge and yeah that's about it battery's fully charged everything's plugged in except for the coils and the crank sensor so should we do it all right you excited i am excited i'm excited for this thing to be like done oh honey you should know that they're never officially done <laughs> That's my dick. All right, well, hop in. Gucci. All right, crank her over. Like, just turn it on. It's not going to start. One more. Okay, getting some pressure. A little more. One more time. All right, we good? Oil pressure. We're getting some serious pressure. Fuel pressure, we got like 25 PSI, just chilling there. I think we're ready to do the thing. I feel like this is always the scariest part. This is the most nerve wracking thing I've ever done. I know, I, I, I think I have anxiety. Should we plug her in? Lord, please watch over my Evo as we fire her. Anxiety to the max. What I want you to do, if it starts, let it run for five-ish seconds, kill it. Just to make sure we don't got serious leakage. Unless I yell, then you kill it. Well, you told me not to put, put it in my clutch. It's gonna be a little noisy at first. We got no oil in the lifters. I can't do this. Are you getting, are you hitting it? I literally can't do it. Bobby, come on. It's not gonna start right away. It might, but I doubt it. Okay, ready? Yep. Kill it. No leaks yet? Why did it start so easy? I knew it would, with me. Didn't you, did I just hear you come up here and say that everything I build goes to shit? <laughs> I didn't say that. Something close. All right, let's go again. It's just uh, burning stuff off the manifold. Look at there. Okay guys, as you heard, she runs. It started up way easier than I thought it would. Literally like right when she cranked it, she just, you know, fired up. Um, oil pressure was good. What we're gonna, she's, she's ran twice now. 
just a little bit, maybe like 30, 45 seconds at runtime total. I'm gonna let it cool down completely, check all the fluids, mainly engine oil, and uh, check the water, make sure we're good there. And then provided all that's good, we can start the break-in process. Ooh, this is This is just insane. Those top, the, the lifters seem a little noisy still, which they usually quiet down within like five seconds. Um, something in the head is making a little noise. Maybe it's because she's built, I don't know. There's only four quarts in here, so as soon as that oil cooler fills up, she's gonna be a bit low. This is like, I've been, gotten nervous starting other engines before, but nothing like this. Ew, what does it smell like that? Like what? Like fruity. Fruity? Mm-hmm. Because the fruit cake's in the shop. Mm. Probably about a quart low on oil, maybe three quarters of a quart. So let's add some oils. This is just nuts, dude. There's no leaks on the car yet. Knock on wood. I think there's E85 in it. I wish. There's no gas in this damn thing. Doesn't it look used already? Mm-hmm. So, you know that's how you break in new motors? It's used oil. It's got more mm -hmm. abrasives in it, so it uh, seats the rings better. It also allows the rod bearings to really seat and bind with the crank. Honey. Because you want them fused together, the rod bearings and the crank. You're such a liar. Oh, I'm serious. Otherwise, it wouldn't turn over. <laughs> You're such a liar. Also, also the spark plugs as well. We got to seat those bad boys. I've never had a full build like this go so smooth. We literally had a water pump leak and that's it. Don't be jinxing no, yourself. No, this tree already started. Game over. Nothing to jinx now. I'm talking uh -huh. about the first start. I don't like that smell. Oh, shit. I spilled oil. Okay, so we're just gonna do the initial break in right now, which is 20 minutes of two to 3,000 RPM, just varying it. And then we're gonna let it cool down after that and uh, make sure all the foods are good to go and we can go on the first drive. But I don't wanna go on the first drive until everything's like 100%. We still have to bleed the clutch, the brakes, ACD, power steering, make sure the tranny's good to go on gear oil, make sure the transfer's good to go on fluids wire in the wide band wire in the oil pressure gauge which we don't have there's like a thousand little things so i'll probably save that for tomorrow huh mm -hmm. i don't want to spend eight years on a build and then just half-ass the last part and blow it up yeah be a little sus I don't know, I don't know what spring is in this VOV right now, but the whole time the car was running, it was literally wide open, nonstop. So I'm gonna go ahead, we do have a stiffer spring that came with the VOV kit, so I'm gonna swap that out. And at the same time, we have, a, beside the point of making this car run better, but we might as well do it. We have this JDC titanium hardware kit for this VOV. One, two, three, four, five. Um, these are gonna look sick. Nice blue hardware on the black BOV, and we gotta take them off anyway. So you might as well put the new ones on. The spring is sus. I wonder if I need both springs in there or a whole different spring altogether. It was a very rattly noise, and Bobby said it sounded like the exhaust. Like a heat shield. There's really no heat shields on the car. The only thing I can think of is that downpipe is kind of sus. Mm and it might be rubbing on the subframe a lot but what do you want kid um to me it sounded like something in the turbo so let's hope it's not well it's not a big deal if it is because i can fix it well that's a way beefier one can i try it it might be well if it's too strong and then it just never opens <laughs> dv nimala 10 saves you 10 percent Okay, now the fun part. Oh, so you need just a muscle. Your big belly. Mm -hmm. Damn, those things look so good. They really do. It just really pops on that black BOV. 
This is like a 90, this is like a 90%. No, this is like a 50%. What? <laughs> 90 to 50? Well, I got to thinking. This turbo's too small. That very, very loud rattle happened to be our little valve cover heat shield. So I just bent it out in just a, just a smidgen and it took care of that. I've been trying to bleed the, bleed the power steering as Bobby is varying the rev from two to three K. We're all finished up with that 20, initial 20 minutes. I'm still trying to bleed the power steering. There's this very odd noise and I, I keep swearing that it's the turbo, but then it sounds just like power steering. But if you go into the car, it sounds like it's from the downpipe which would be the turbo because it did downpipe bolt straight to the turbo and the downpipe is not hitting on the subframe. So it's not that I'm gonna keep trying to bleed this power steering out. Um, we should technically go drive the car now, but we have way more important issues to figure out before then, because if our turbo is making that much noise, I'm not going to drive it. We're going to buy just a brand new turb ski, slap her on there, be done. Maybe go from the 6266 to 7999. A big bitch but yeah we're out of gas completely out of gas nearly actually we didn't run it all the way dry but <laughs> she's getting close um so we're gonna go have fuel come back do the whole thing and keep trying to bleed the power steering and while bobby's here we got to bleed the clutch and the brakes and i'm really excited to like throw this thing in gear and see if it out if it'll actually like spin the wheels because you also do have a new transfer and trans or like a freshly rebuilt half ass rebuilt by DV Nimala. You want me to do the brakes in the clutch today? Yeah. Do you ever want to like, you know, rip this thing? We got to make some progress. All right, boys, we are back in the shop. Got her a little bit filled up on fuel, put like three or four gallons in it. We're going to go ahead and bleed the ACD system real quick. So it's a very, very simple process from what I remember and what I understand. All we really have to do is have Mr. Bobby over here in the car. I mean, Mrs. Bob, Bob Wall, the one and only. Uh, I don't know what else to say about her. And she is going to turn on the ignition. I'm also talking to you at the same time. Turn on, turn on the ignition, hit the gas pedal. Let me know when you hit the gas pedal and I'll be under the car. On the transfer case, there's a little bleeder and I'm just gonna crack that bleeder and then close it when we're gonna do that five or six times. Uh -huh. Or just hold on the gas, like. Yep. Just hold the gas pedal down. All the way. It's not gonna. The car's not running. Oh, the car's not running. The car's not running. The car is not running. <laughs> <laughs> Why is nothing happening? Is the gas pedal all the way down? Yeah. Okay. Try again. Pretty sure we need some turbo work. That noise I've been hearing. I thought it was power steering. Been bleeding power steering. It's still there. Pulled the accessory belt off, so the power steering pump is not running currently. And let me show you, I'll just show you guys what it sounds like. It does not sound healthy whatsoever. <laughs> Sounding a little, just a little on the sus side to me. We can pull off the turbo guard and feel it and it feels fine. Right, spins fine. There's very, very minimal shaft play. To me, it honestly sounds like the exhaust wheel is hitting the housing or something like that. Um, yeah, not fun. Thankfully, the turbo on this car is very, very easy to remove. If it's cooled down, I would do it right now, but it's very, very warm. So I'm not gonna do it right now. That turbo's fuckered. It is. It's gotta be. Honey. What? It's probably not. You think it's power steering? Yeah. Well, what would you say if I told you the power steering pump is not currently running? And it's still... A little oh, sus? A little bit sus. I would say then it's the uh, intake. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I just don't want it to be the turbo. I'm going to talk to a few people about our options. I know Turbo Lab of America does a lot of obviously a lot of turbo work and maybe they could just take this whole entire turbo and modify it 
make it a little better potentially and uh, we could install it back on the car. But while Bobby's here, we're gonna go ahead and bleed the brakes and the clutch. And I guess we can get the whole entire car back up in the air and see if it actually um, spins the wheels because we did a lot of trans and transfer work. Okay, so we have the clutch bled, brakes are bled, Bobby's in the car and Jesse is gonna overwatch and make sure this thing drives. Okay, well, let's do it. Fire this thing up, Ready? put it in gear, let the clutch out slowly in case it grenades. Excuse me? Yeah. All right, let's go. I don't want to die. The fucker, <laughs> this this thing moves. Look how happy you are. The transmission and the transfer case kind of work. I know, baby. It at least spins the tires. So it's a good start. Yes. Overall, super, super successful day in the shop. I'm happy with how everything came out. We don't have any leaks. The car runs. It runs good. It drives, I think. We didn't actually put it on the ground and go drive it yet, but it spins the wheels, which means we are headed in the right freaking direction, which is big, it's massive. All we really need to do is figure out and diagnose that noise, which I'm, I'm fairly confident it's the turbo. It does sound like a power steering pump or a power steering whine, but it's like, um, but it's not because we have been running it with the power steering disconnected, like the belt off the power steering pump and it's still making that noise. So it's gotta be something in the turbo. So I'm going to probably pop this turbo off tomorrow, see if there's anything that we did wrong with it. And if not, then we're just gonna have to send it in and get that bearing cage completely replaced. Unfortunately, made a little bit of a mess with this engine bay today. Got a few scratches down there that I'm sure we could buff out, but she's still looking mighty fine. I haven't even showed you guys the exhaust yet. We're still running the same exhaust, which is very quiet, but I'm gonna fire it up real quick. And I don't even know, does this thing even lope at all with the cams? It better. Hey, a little bit of lope going on. Hell yeah, that sounds sick. All right, all right, that's enough for today. Hope you guys enjoyed, drop a comment down below. If any turbo experts are on here, let me know if you think that sounds like turbo noise. I honestly don't know don't know what else it would be. It's only like, it's such a weird rattle. Peace out, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.